Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to Chris's Inked Pens for September 2022. Um, I'm kind of continuing this month with what I did for August, which is I picked an ink brand and I stuck with that brand in my eight pens throughout the month. And it was so much fun with the Pilot inks that I did a poll and it came out really close between Robert Oster and Diamine. I'm not sure which one won, but I did end up going with Robert Oster first, but there's plenty of year left. There's still going to be October, November, December. So I'll move on to other brands for the last three months of the year, but it's going to be Robert Oster this month. But uh, I'm going to show you the pens, which were really, there's nothing new right here this time in my pens. These are all pretty tried and true, but uh, I'm emphasizing the inks this month, um, kind of like I did last time, but I also I actually do have two new pens coming my way, so um, that I'm gonna try out. So that's exciting too. It's not that I've, I'm just uh, not uh, worried about trying new pens at all. Okay, anyway, that's a ramble. <laughs> all right, the first pen is the Opus 88 Omar in the clear, and it has a broad nib. Oh, it's noon. <laughs> this is an odd time for me to do a video, actually. We're having a lot of rain, and I'm having to supplement my light, and the rain is a good thing. I'm not going to complain whatsoever, because we need the rain. The second pen is a Twisby Eco in yellow with a, a broad nib. Okay, and uh, not exactly a match for the ink, but definitely kind of, well, I'll know which one it is by that. <laughs> Uh, an old favorite pen, which is my Lamy Vista, with a new, to me, nib, which is a 1.5, that I just absolutely love and, you know, have visions of three more of them being around here, so. Um, next up is the purple Hongdian, um, let's see, Forest, I think is part of its name, too, and it is a Fude nib on it, so it's a bent nib, let's see if I can show that. It is a bent nib, and it gives kind of a brush stroke looking um, lettering, and I just love it. I, it feels like my handwriting gets an upgrade um, with that nib, so it's really, really... It was such a surprise, too, when I found out how nicely that pen wrote. It's an under $20 pen, so or it was at the time. Okay, the next, next up is Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, this one is the stub nib in clear, or it's a... It's an AL, um, aluminum version, okay? And then another uh, Twisby Diamond 580, and I think this was rose. It's, it's red to me, but it's rose, and I put the broad nib unit on this one, okay? And then next up is an old favorite. In fact, I think it's unfair. I've been probably using this a lot, but anyway, that's okay. Um, it's the... Jin Hao X750 in uh, silver, and I've got a uh, Goulet broad nib in it. <clears throat> Just a winning combination. Can't remember why. Oh, okay, so the pen I wanted to put this in didn't have a broad nib on it, so I, I went lazy on myself and put it in there. <laughs> I wanted it in the Moon Man with the sw green swirl, but it would have required a pen cleaning and a nib swap both. And I was like, that's okay. It can wait till next time. Um, and then last but not least is the Lamy Safari in Terra, Terracotta, Terra Red. Terra Red, I think is, it is, with a broad nib. So these are the pens. And as we go through, I will uh, show you the, the ink tile and do a writing sample. That, so that's what's next. Okay, so first, uh, Opus 88 Omar with a broad nib, and I have chosen Robert Oster Muddy Water. It's a beautiful blue, and I really haven't explored this one, this ink, anywhere near as much as I would like, so I'm excited. Omar, clear, with a broad nib. And I guess since they're all going to be, they're all Robert Oster, so I'm just going to put the ink name. <clears throat> it's going to give me a little bit more room. Muddy Water. 
I think what I want to do is just like X's and, and smears so I can get a really good idea of how wet the nib is in each instance. Now it looks to me like I think I picked all broad and stub nibs so we probably ought to have a good experience but we'll see. I'm having a feeling like a little bit of red accidentally got on there so I wouldn't pay attention to that portion of I'm gonna have to redo this tile but it's just a really pleasing blue um, it's not too bright it's not too dark and it just looks like it's gonna be really really fun so um, oh I forgot to mention I do have quite a few Robert Oster samples and and bottles I had some half bottles gifted to me and so I, I made a shell box with just Robert Oster. So it was really neat because I had them all pulled out and ready. The other thing I wanted to mention was I was remembering some that I now don't have anymore and one in particular. I finished the samples and I thought, hmm. <laughs> I was remembering, uh, not Rumble, I have Rumble. It was orange, burned orange. I remember a nice sample of burned orange and it's all gone. So that that's interesting because what happens is though to replace in a category where I have a, another full bottle is probably not a good idea. So I need to use up my KWZ Monarch first. Okay, boy, I, I get sidetracked really easily. Okay, so next is the Twisby Eco in yellow with Robert Oster Gold Antiqua. Um, like I said, not a color match, but I wanted something that would tell me the yellow or the gold ink was in <laughs> a certain pen. It just, it's a nice visual clue. And I do love the broad nib on this Eco. It's, it's a nice one. So, Twisby. I actually think that these yellow Twisby Ecos look really nice with black ink in them. Um, but I don't write a lot with black ink, so... <laughs> Go yellow, broad nib. Not as it's not as broad as the Omar nib or the the larger number six nib. This is a, you know, the smaller size, and this is gold, Antiqua. Okay, we'll make our X. Uh, let's try that again. I didn't move very fast. Okay. So you could see that, that that seemed a little wetter. But of course it's a bigger nib, so no surprise there. <laughs> okay, next up, I, I had some mistakes on my original um, lineup uh, that I did, but this is the purple that I wanted to try, which is Muddy Crown. And I really like this ink. And I have it in a stub nib, the 1.5 in the Lamy, uh, I was going to say Safari, Lamy Vista. Let's see. Now, it's always interesting to do these marks. I think I'll go both ways. I'll go the thin line, and then I'll also go the thick line, because I won't be able to see <laughs> very well unless I do both. So Lamy Vista, 1.5. I just love this nib. And Muddy Crown. Very nice. Very, very happy with that. <clears throat> and we'll see kind of as we go along how it how it does for letter writing. And, and I think in that nib, I think it's going to be nicer in this than it would be in the 1.1. Because the 1.1 Lamy nibs don't put down as much ink. So I think I'm going to be super happy with this. But that's what this month is all about, is exploring these. So next up is the Hongdian Forest um, with the Fude nib with Robert Oster Bronze, which is a, an, an ink that I really love. Now, it does tend to look dark in the nib, but we'll see if we can get any of it to kind of show its color. I'm not sure. Um, the, be the Bent or Fude nib is just really a lot of fun. So Hongdian... I think it's Forest Series, Food A Nib, and we're dealing with Bronze, the ink name. I think, funny story on that, I wasn't going to, I was, I was ordering, um, 
I was ordering the bronze and I got the Antiqua by mistake and then I worked out, you know, it all worked out to where I ended up uh, having them send the correct one and I just paid uh, less and ended up with both. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember, but it, it was neat. I remember thinking, well, I guess I needed both and I just didn't know. So, um, uh, otherwise, I think it was just the bronze I was after. I do love the Antiqua too. It's very pretty, but it is lighter and it kind of has that greenish, yellowish. It doesn't get as gold gold as maybe. So I'm still searching for which nib that might be best in. I think that's what the point of this is. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. With all this rain, I don't even know what to think. It's like being, it's like having a holiday because all of a sudden we're going to, we're not experiencing the hot, hot, dry, we're breaking out slowly of the uh, drought. At least I hope we are. We're getting rain anyway. Okay, so this is the Twisby uh, Diamond 580 with the stub nib. And I'd kind of forgotten that I had the stub nib unit for this. Um, so... Okay, so there's the thin line, and, and there's the other line. <laughs> Twisby. Whoops. Diamond 580. I do notice every once in a while I get something where it doesn't quite fill in. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. 1.1. But... Oh, okay, we're having a little issue. We're having an issue. Oh, no, what's going on here? Well, that might be something I have to work on later, but let's see if we can write the, the color name or not. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a new one for me. Did I just get too carried away, maybe, drying off the, the nib? I'm not sure. Um, we'll look into that, and on the progress report, I will let you know what happens. Okay, so next up is the red ink for the month, which is going into the Twisby Diamond 580 uh, with a broad nib unit on it. Muddy Dragon. It was Muddy Dragon and Muddy Crown that I mixed up on my little uh, uh, display photo, I think, that I did. Uh, Twisby. Ooh, this is really nice and juicy. This is a lot juicier than the stub, huh? Well, isn't that weird? I wouldn't have thought that. I, I don't have much experience with that particular nib, though. It's new to me, so well, I'll, I'll have to take a look. Broad nib. Muddy Dragon. I really like that. Make our little X. Okay, so it's not a bright, bright red. The camera... And the side lighting and everything else uh, that I'm having to use is probably giving that impression that it's really bright. It's more subdued, and I love it. I just really love it because <clears throat> it is readable. That's the thing. That's what it, it needs in order for me to like it, I think. Okay, next up is the Jinhao X750 with the broad goulet nib and Tranquility, which is getting very low in the bottle. I really love this ink. This usually ends up in my Moon Man Mini with a broad number five nib um, in the green swirl one. And I've just, I just am in love with this ink. I, it's a nice wet ink. It's a, it's a beautiful teal. I, I'm just crazy about it. I have been for a long, long time. So that's probably why that'll be one of the very few bottles where I end up replacing, you know, getting another one. Okay, Jinhao X750. Ooh, that's nice and wet, too. Um, silver broad nib unit. I mean, yeah, Goulet. Okay, and Tranquility. And we got X. And Ooh, see that? How that is very nice. Huh. That may be the wettest yet. <laughs> okay, so next is number eight pen and ink. The uh, 
Lamy Safari Terra Red. I think it's Terra Red. I keep going back and forth between calling it the wrong thing. So, And this is Robert Oster Antelope Can Canyon. It's a Pen Chalet exclusive. And it's a very pretty kind of a, almost a burned orange. A, definitely a, a really interesting orange. Very, very um, dark enough to read and, and kind of special. Kind of in that... Um, you know, in that range. And then, of course, I've had Robert Oster Tangerine. I had a lot of the oranges. Oh, Robert Oster Terracotta is a little little bit different. It's got a different tone. Oh, yeah, Robert Oster Orange Rumble. Oh, and that was the other thing. Almost all of these, there's only two out of the eight that were, they were all sent initially as either sample or share bottle from... Um, Pen friend KS, and thank you very much. You know who you are, and I really appreciate it. I mean, I've had such exposure to more inks than I ever would have been able to get, you know, get over the years. And I'm just now, like, processing the last five years, you know, beginning to, to get somewhere with it. So uh, definitely um, well suited with ink. I'm wanting to make sure that's clear. But <laughs> Lamy Safari. Uh... Terra, red, I do believe, with a broad Lamy nib, and Antelope Canyon. Okay, I really like it in this broad nib. I had it in something else one time where I felt like, oh no, it's not wet enough, but this is nice, and uh, Lamy broad nib is what I kind of default to to check out an ink if I'm wondering about it because I do really like how Lamy's uh, broad nibs behave. And this is a Pen Chalet exclusive. I don't know what the current status is on uh, availability, so I'll check into that before we come back with a progress report too, of course. So that is it. That is the eight pens and the eight Robert Oster inks for uh, September 2022. And let me just situate this. This is all crooked here. Uh, one thing before I close out this video, one thing I wanted to mention was I had chosen like a first, second, and third, you know, place kind of a mid-month in August for my favorite pen. But my favorite ended up, my, the pen and ink combination or the pen that I wrote with the most ended up being this little uh, Opus 88 uh, mini. And it is the holiday, um, let's see, it says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2022. Uh, by Opus 88. What happened was, I think it's the color, but I ended up reaching for this one the most. And for some reason, about mid-month, it was uh, tied for second place, more or less. But I really ended up using it more. Now, I love the Konpeki, and uh, also the, uh, and that was in the Jinhao X450. And the Lamy 2000 is still going really good. It's probably almost gone now, the ink. Uh, in, with the Pilot Fuyu Shogun. But I, I can definitely say now that this was my favorite combination. Um, it's got that little uh, number five broad nib on it. And if, I don't have to worry about the ink running out because it's it takes a lot of ink to fill this. And I've just really enjoyed writing with it. So that is where... And this was the sample on that. It's a teal. It's really, really pretty. It, it was Pilot Orochizuku... Uh, S Y O R O. Do on pine tree. Aha, that's the English, so I need to stick to that. Do on pine tree. Definitely a really pretty one, and I think it's it's a sample. I'm looking at my bottles, but it was definitely a sample. So here we are, and I will when when I come back with this particular thing, I'll have a kind of a grade in mind, and I'll have some notes and ideas, and we'll see how these write. So far. As far as just getting down the preliminaries, the only one that gave me a little bit of trouble was the stub on the Diamond 580, which kind of surprises me, but it could just be I need to resaturate the nib and be reasonable about um, getting it flowing and stuff. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on, why it would do that, but it's just a, probably a minor thing. I'll take a look at the nib, though, and make sure there's nothing wrong. I don't think there is. Um, so I mentioned... Uh, the, uh, that I ordered a couple of pens. Um, I ordered the little mini pen that uh, 
was in the August ink flight, and I can't even think of the name. It's just a little mini pen that takes a cartridge. Um, when I found out it was it was fairly easy to obtain, and I had uh, <laughs> channel money left, I ordered that, and I ordered a plastic uh, Gen Hao X159. So I've got those two pens and the rickshaw, um, the Sinclair R that's coming out, that's a knock and rickshaw kind of collaboration it's on its way to me it's actually in the mail so that was how i finished spending the channel money and i'm really excited because uh, they put the price lower than they initially said as sort of an introductory price so that allowed me to get those two chinese well no one is a pen, pen made in japan and one is a chinese pen but they're going to be really interesting i think additions to uh, my pen collection and uh, something new to try which I seemed a little bit hungry for so I will be sharing those with you but a lot of other people have done reviews already I don't you know I just am excited to um oh I'll show you the pen that I was hoping to replace uh oh <clears throat> let me reach for it I just detected a problem I didn't re plug in my mic so I'm going to have to listen to this to see whether I was you know my usual volume was good enough I don't know shoot I hope I don't have to redo this because um, it's busy time so this pen um, is uh, let's see I don't even remember what it is <coughs> Lambatu I want to say and it's got a, it's got a uh, name but I can't even think of it Oh, that's terrible. It's not on here. Anyway, it's a hooded nib, little pocket pen. But I don't like the filling system. I've had trouble getting enough ink into it. So I think with the one that I ordered that was part of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the ink flight. And I'll just have to link it in the description because I can't even think of the name. Uh, I think it's going to satisfy my desire for a pen of this size in metal. <clears throat> but have a the little cartridge which will probably be a better filling system for me anyway I probably should have uh, made sure my uh, mic was plugged in because now I'm a little bit worried anyway these are the pens and inks I'm going to be using and uh, things are going okay here Willie is uh, you know he's okay at the moment he's taken uh, he finished one medicine and seemed to have a uh, an improvement and he's he's taken his other one and he'll go back to the vet pretty soon but um, so just a little mini follow-up there nobody none of the cats are real happy about the rain but I am because we really need it uh, we need to have our ground and our drinking water and our <laughs> you know water availability and the whole nine yards and our trees and everything so I hope that you're doing fine I, I um, will be really looking forward to hearing which like inks and pens you're using and if any of these are of interest to you um, which one would be your favorite now let me make a prediction let's see <laughs> I was gonna try to predict which one that I'd enjoy the most now I don't know about the color but I think the writing experience is going to be just fantastic with this um, food a nib and the bronze I mean, it's a nice color, but it's not what I think of as the bright, bright color that I normally like. I know I'm going to love the tranquility and the broad nib. Uh, boy, I really was really digging that, too, because the Diamond 580 with the broad nib, it was a lot juicier than I expected it to be. I don't know. I don't think that's just the beginning, either, because I, I did go ahead and write... I mean, I don't think it was just the feed because I did write them all out so I could remember what was going on. Um, let's see. What's another contender for a favorite? And I have the, well, the Muddy Crown. I really like the looks of it. I'm not sure a, st a stub is going to win my heart, though. It's usually a broad nib. Probably it's going to end up being this one. Maybe a tie between <laughs> Robert Oster, Muddy Water, and then... Uh, I like the Muddy Dragon. That whole series, uh, I think there's seven of them. The inks, really, I like them a lot better than I thought I would. I never would have tried them, but Pen Friend KS sent me samples, and I fell in love with them. Um, and I really like this, too, but it's not very dramatic. I tend to go for the dramatic, like, tranquility. Um, let's see. Oh, Blue Denim. That was... Huh. Did I skip one? 
I guess I need to get my act together. Oh no, that was the one that gave me a little trouble. Okay, the blue denim is a very beautiful ink, but it could also be a little dry. I can't remember. There's something about that going around in my head. Anyway, this is not a <laughs> this is not a progress report. We'll be back with that, and I'll be back with some first impressions on the uh, Rickshaw Sinclair R slash knock and also the two pens that I ordered. So I'll see you soon and I'm, you take care. <laughs> Bye for now.